हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई हैव बीन टॉकिंग टू यू अबाउट दिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन यूरोफ्लोमीट्री इन माय वेरियस लेक्चर्स इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू द सेम इन दिस वीडियो आई विल फोकस अपॉन हाउ शुड यू इंटरप्रेट द फ्लो टाइम एंड फ्लो रेट्स दीज टू पैरामीटर्स when you do a urophrometry test you ask the patient to void in the funnel of urophrometer so first he passes urine into the funnel and from the funnel it goes into a kind of bin uh, put over the sensor now this is one model of urophrometer there are different models of machines available across the world but conceptually this is what it is and when patient finishes his winding a report is generated like this in this inverted u kind of a area which is called a urophrometry report we see various findings this graph is plotted on two axes the x axis on which we show the time in seconds and y axis on which we show the volume in ml now here you will see that this written here maximum flow rate average flow rate and these are the terms that we use to convey the meaning voided volume time of maximum flow flow time etc so how do we interpret these names and these findings that is the objective of this video now suppose you have this kind of graph in front of you this patient is voided interruptedly and the time taken for each is one sector and when you add these all four this time will be called as flow time but if you consider the time total from the beginning of the act of maturation till the end of the act of maturation then this will be called as voiding time so you should understand this difference between flow time and voiding time then is about the flow rate in each urophrometry graph you have these x and y axis suppose patient voids like this then the highest point of the graph is taken as q max and the time to reach the q max is called time q max then there is another term called average flow rate now to understand the average flow rate if the patient voids like this in spurts and then he has taken some time so if you divide the total volume voided by the flow time you get what is called average flow rate so in urophrometry we have two kind of flow rates maximum flow rate and average flow rate and i hope you have understood the difference euroflow has been a very basic investigation when it comes to making a diagnosis of a patient who has bladder outflow obstruction and when you ask him to produce a urophlometry report that is the kind of graph you will get it's called the low q max typically known as low q max graph now this low q max graph can either result because of the obstruction to the bladder outlet because of many diseases that you know already or it can result because of underactivity of the detrusor either of these two and then there are patients who have a mixture of both of these so these are therefore three kind of syndromes three kind of clinical combinations where you get low q max now before you start interpreting the q max data given by the urophrometry report you should know some basics about what are those things which can introduce fallacy in the report suppose here is a person who is passing urine in the urophrometry machine now if there is a sudden rise of intra abdominal pressure while he is passing urine like sneezing like coughing 
or the voluntary does so, then for a while the peak will go up or or else patient does a transient manual urethral squeeze. Some people are habit of massaging their urethra while they're passing urine. So if that is the case, for the duration, urethra is occluded, the flow will stop. And the moment urethra is open, a jet of flow will come out and that will be fallaciously high flow rate. There can be an abrupt movement of the urethral meatus by the patient. And that abrupt movement of the urethral meatus will change the speed of fall or flow of the stream in the funnel. Some patients, when they pass urine in the flow meter machine, they wander their stream in the entire funnel of the flow meter all around, here and there, here and there. Actually, we should tell the patient in the beginning not to do so. But if by mistake they do it, this wandering stream can also have impact on the Qmax. And sometimes patient's shoe uh, touches the stand or the urophometry machine. It's called a knock or a shaken flow meter. And that results in a kind of an aberration and you get a high Qmax. So before you interpret the Qmax values on the graph of the patient, please make sure that there are no such fallacies in the record. To give you some example, the patient passed urine like this. You will notice there's a peak in the beginning. Now this sudden spike has come either because of the cough or sneeze or some shaking the flowmetry machine. Machine will give you a data Qmax 30 ml per second. But you know this is fallacy. And actually the graph should be read something like this as shown by the green line. So this Qmax is fallacious. In another case, the person who works like this, you notice there are many small, 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 small peaks. Now these peaks either result because of some problem in the machine, more sensitive electrode, or uh, uh, some patients, they in between put abdominal straining and they try to do various things to improve their flow rates. So these kind of abnormal graph patterns often come before you. You should not go by these peaks that are coming up. Imagine a kind of smooth curve like that. If somebody voids like this, you be sure that this is not a normal uniformity report. There is some kind of a technical abnormality in the sensor probe. That is why these spikes are coming. So I hope you understood that how do we interpret the times, the flow time and voiding time, and how do we interpret Qmax and average flow rate in these graphs. And uh, having known that, let me also tell you that there are some variations as per the age and sex. And if you see for a man in a different age group, we have an acceptable range of Qmax, as you can see here. So younger people tend to have a higher Qmax as compared to middle-aged and elderly people, as you can see here. In women, again, younger women will have higher Qmax and elderly women will have a lower Qmax as acceptable normal. In children, children below 10 years have a different Qmax. Children between 10 to 20 years have a different Qmax. So you have to know these figures before you start uh, paying attention to the, the result. When you're going to make a final judgment on the urophometry graph, it is a good idea to go by this mnemonic upstream. This concept has been brought to us rather recently. And uh, it considers in the upstream, U is for usual, which means confirm that the void that was done in the urophometry lab was similar to what patient does in his home or in his office, in his normal environment. So that is first thing. Look at the pattern of the flow metry, right? Whether there are interruptions and fluctuations in the graph. If there are interruptions and fluctuations in the graph, whether they are indicative of a disease 
or there are technical errors in the machine. By experience, you can start making these impressions. Look at the shape of uniformity graph. There are various shapes, various patterns. I'll talk about this a little later. Then look at the total time taken by the patient. Time taken to complete the void from initiation to the beginning. The rates, I just told you Qmax and average flow rate. Then emptying. Emptying means whether the patient has completely emptied his or her urinary bladder or is there a post void residual urinary volume in the bladder. Then is there an artifact? And I touched upon this a little while ago. There's sometimes the spikes. These spikes are artifacts because of various reasons. And finally, whether the entire exercise has been meaningful to you for making a diagnosis or not. So I hope you understood what I wanted to talk to you about flow rates and flow time interpretations in uniformity graph. In case you have any questions, you can write to me on my email. Thank you very much.